morning, everyone. I'm called Dora, and I have the privilege of presenting the tuberculosis diagnostic archery cells tool expert and during Alere Lam in Vulnerable Children on behalf of the TB Lam team. Tuberculosis remains a major infectious disease and a major killer, with most cases occurring in resource limited countries. In 2019 alone, children contributed about 11% of the estimated global TB burden. According to WHO, worldwide, about 40% of children who develop TB every year are notified. And this is, is due to a failure to diagnose TB, making it difficult to, access, to assess the true burden of the disease in this population. Because of the post-bacillary nature of TB and the difficulty in collection of samples, especially good quality respiratory samples, it's a major challenge in the diagnosis of TB among its children. Mortality due to childhood TB is estimated to be 230,000 deaths a year, with models suggesting that most of these children who die from TB are under five and are untreated. Children younger than two years and have TB or malnourished are children that have a higher risk of developing TB, especially the severe forms of TB and the disseminated form of TB. The low sensitivity and specificity of the clinical signs that we commonly use in pediatrics make it more difficult to get the actual burden of TB amongst these children. So as that, there is an urgent need for rapid and accurate non-sputum-based TB diagnostic tests in this vulnerable group. So the need for the non-sputum TB non-based tests, we are looking at the urine lamb antigen point of care test. And this has been recommended for some time, however, the data we use in pediatrics has been used in adults, like you saw in the first presentation. And then we are looking at a stool-based test, which is the expert on stool. Neither urine lamb or stool expert has been done, or it has been evaluated in children who are at high risk of developing disseminated TB and other severe forms of TB. So as the TB lamb group, we set out to evaluate the diagnostic accuracy of two non-sputum TB tests in children that were at an increased risk of developing severe or disseminated forms of TB. And we are looking at expert MTB RIF assay from stool and the urine assay from on urine, definitely. So it was a prospective diagnostic study dedicated and looking at, it was an accuracy study done at Mbara Regional Referral Hospital and was done during the time of 2015 from September to March 2018. We were looking at children who are vulnerable to getting TB and their eligibility criteria was either having a risk of severe or disseminated TB and we are looking at children who are younger than two years. We are looking at children who are HIV positive, looking at children that are severely malnourished and also children who had a clinical suspicion of TB those who are not below two years. So at enrollment, we did a complete medical history, did a clinical examination, chest x-rays, tuberculin tests. We collected two urine samples and two stool samples on two consecutive days. And these were our specimen of interest. Also, we collected two respiratory samples that were tested on expert and microbacterial culture. And these included sputum, for children who could produce sputum, we had induced sputum for those who couldn't. We had gastric aspirate for children who, of course, who were younger and couldn't be able to willingly give us sputum, and nosopharyngeal aspirates. We also collected another series of, pulmonary, of extra pulmonary samples, depending on if the child had a, an extra pulmonary sample to give. And this included things like swabs, we did blood cultures, we did for some lymph node biopsies for those who had such indication for the extra pulmonary samples. Our endpoints were to look at 
the study test we set out to study, and that was tool expert, and would be where either MTB detected negative or invalid, and in the urine lamb results was uh, study was uh, either positive plus one, positive plus two, plus three, plus four, or negative tests. And these studies were to be studied or compared against the reference standards, and in this case. We had microbiological reference standards, which were positive of any MTB culture or expert result from the respiratory samples, and uh, negative if you had one negative culture of expert or expert result from the two different samples. We also had a composite reference based on clinical def definition for classification of intrathoracic tuberculosis disease, and this was uh, we're following uh, work by Graham et al of CID 2015, and the cases were categorized into TB, either confirmed or unconfirmed TB, and confirmed TB you had a positive test, basically labor laboratory test, often confirmed you had signs that were suggestive or responding to treatment once started on anti-B. And uh, we also had not TB if you had unlikely TB from your clinic exam, and also chest x-ray read by two independent readers and independent case reviews for classification of these cases. Our results, we enrolled 238 children. Of those 238, 19 were analyzed. The ones that were eliminated were 19 who didn't have the complete set of samples because of various reasons, including death before samples could be completely collected. Among the 219 children analyzed, 12 had confirmed tuberculosis, and uh, 58 had uh, sorry. So 58 had unconfirmed tuberculosis. 127 were unlikely to have TB, and 22 were not classified. Of those that were confirmed, the 12 confirmed tuberculosis, six of them were positive from stool expert, and uh, six were positive by, had a positive urine lamb. Among us, those that were unconfirmed, tuberculosis, two had positive stool expert, 11 had uh, positive urine lamb, and those that were unlikely to have tuberculosis, there were two positive from stool expert, and 27 from urine lamb. So among us, the baseline characteristic, we had a fairly an equal distribution of males and females. And uh, the, mid, the mean age was, the median age was 16 months, and the majority of our patients were HIV positive at 72%. Uh, we reported that about 191 of them had received antibiotics before enrollment, and 83% uh, of them had severe malnutrition. When we looked at the sample collection, we managed to get two respiratory samples from 96% of the participants, and two, about 93% were able to give us two stool samples, and we had two urine samples from 93%. And these children were later stratified into those who were below two years and those who were above two years, also to look at how we got the samples from them. Our results were the microbiological results from the respiratory samples. We found that 2.4% had positive smear microscopy, 2.6% had positive LJ culture, 2.6% had a positive MGIT culture, and 2.8% had positive expert. And the other specimens show the positivity from other samples, uh, the respiratory samples as they came. Those who had sputum, induced sputum, gastric aspirate, and uh, the nozo pharyngeal aspirate. 
about the diagnostic accuracy from expert on stool, we found that of the sensitivity of expert compared against the microbiological reference standards gave us a sensitivity of 50%, a specificity of 99%, and a positive predictive value of uh, 75% and a negative predictive value of 97%. When compared against the composite reference standards, uh, expert on stool gave us a sensitivity of 11% and a specificity of 100% and had a positive predictive value of 100 and a negative predictive value of 67%. So when we look at the, the accuracy of urine LAM, we, when compared against the my, microbiological reference standards, urine LAM gave us a sensitivity of 50% and a specificity of 74%. It had a positive predictive value of 10.7 and a negative predictive value of 96.1%. When compared against the composite reference standard, Urine LAM had a sensitivity of 25%, a specificity of 73.2%, positive predictive value of 33, and negative predictive value of 64. So there was a low proportion of TB and TB that was confirmed in this vulnerable population. In this pro prospective cohort of children who are at risk of developing disseminated TB, Non-sputum-based diagnostic methods showed really a modest diagnostic accuracy, with stool expert diagnosing about half of the confirmed cases with a high specificity, while urine LAM had a low sensitivity in this select population. This is similar to what has been reported in actually other studies, and uh, this could be attributed to contamination of uh, the urine in the young, because we still had a challenge. The younger children won't be able to give you a sterile culture. If you use a, a urine bag, you're more likely to have urine stay longer and there is stasis. And also we had inadequate reference standards for disseminated TB. So in conclusion, our study supports what WHO has recommended, that stool is an important sample for childhood TB diagnosis. And for urine LAM to be used in children would require optimization to improve both sensitivity and specificity of the assay, maybe by in improving how we get a, a much cleaner urine catch. However, we know that there is need to research more on biomarkers for active TB in children to develop more sensitive point of care diagnostic tests. We acknowledge all the study participants and uh, the funders. Thank you so much.